We gotta make sure I have my hat on. What's going on everybody? My name is Drew and today we're gonna jump into Lightroom and edit some like kind of hazy white-ish photos. There's nothing worse than being out trying to get some shots and it just looks too white. We recently got back from a trip in Montana and while everything was beautiful to our eye, when we were shooting well, either on our phone or camera or any kind of picture, it always kind of came out a little too foggy, a little too hazy. And you don't want all your pictures that way. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in to make this picture look like this picture with just a couple of simple tweaks. And I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, you can do this with the free version of Lightroom. So you can just sign up for a quick Adobe um, subscription that you don't have to pay for and get the light, Lightroom, Lightroom, light whatever and you can use all of these sliders that I'm gonna use to get your photos to go from hazy to pretty clear so let's dive in alrighty so we are now in Lightroom and this is not Lightroom classic this is uh, whatever just the regular Lightroom version is that you can download again you can download that straight on your phone or your tablet and you know I did it without even using my subscription to begin with so I'm pretty sure you can do this all for free. So here is the original photo that, again, is, is not super bad. You can see up here it's very, very bright, especially as the water's coming down here. It's super, super bright. Uh, the light off of his hat and just, like, around the rocks doesn't create a lot of depth. But what we're going to do is make it something like this. And so uh, just a quick tip for you, if you are hitting the backslash, you can go back between your original photo and your edited photo. So what we're gonna do is use some sliders to get this kind of hazy white that you might not even have noticed uh, to this more dark and nicer contrast photo. So, so make sure we're in versions. We have the original photo um, selected and then we are going to work our way down these tabs on the right. Just as another uh, FYI, if you are using the forward slash, you can bring up all of your photos, but if you want that out of the way, you can hit the forward slash again uh, and make sure that the panels menu right here on the right is open so that you can see it. So we're gonna start with the light tab. Now you might think that the first thing you need to do is start messing with the exposure, but you don't wanna do that exactly because it's not necessarily that you don't have enough light or got too much light it's just that the weather conditions made it such that the camera or whatever took in as much as it could do based on shutter speed and all this crazy stuff so if you were to just start bringing the exposure down now you're just kind of you're bringing the entire image down you're not really working with one part just as if you were going to bring it up you can see everything together is kind of getting bright so we're not going to start with exposure and if you start messing up just double click it'll take it back to zero so if you screw up double click goes back to zero but we're going to go down to this point curve or s curve whatever you want to call it and we're going to work on the low tones here and you can see kind of this like faded guide of what it's what Lightroom is suggesting that your image has and we're gonna take this guy right here but we're gonna make a second point right here and we are going to bring that down just a little bit because all we're trying to do is not so much affect the entire exposure but just bring certain parts of the image up and certain parts down so we're gonna move that bottom low tones somewhat mid tones whatever you want to call it you know I'm not a I'm not a professional I'm just yeah, I'm just saying words here um, but we're gonna move that around into a place that looks pretty good um, and so this is already better so again original that's just with the s curve <laughs> so it's a pretty powerful thing right here now you can go on to do all of these like other curves and kind of get a nice like very strange but kind of cool composition that brings out the best of all the colors. Um, but I am not going to do that because I'm not really concerned with changing a bunch of the color. We're just really trying to make it more cinematic and kind of punch it out a little bit. So after we've done the S curve, what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the exposure contrast highlights tab and we're going to work on the contrast. Now, when we start bringing it up, you're gonna see that things start to punch through a little bit. You have a lot of depth back here uh, in this kind of back angle here, as well as you know a couple of different parts like down here in the rock 
um, you can see that shadows start getting, and we're not even working on shadows yet. Um, we've just noticed that with just increasing contrast, things start to punch. Now, if you go the opposite way with contrast, everything kind of blends together and it's it's muted and it's there's kind of no depth. So we want more depth, so we're just going to bring the slider up a little bit. Um, again, if you mess up, you can double click, but I think I'm going to land it somewhere around 28, 30. You can see that things are getting a little bit too a little bit too carried away but I really like the way that his shirt looks so keep in mind with any of these sliders you can make it look fake by doing too much or too less now remember if we go back you know to the original photo it was flipping bright on that day so clearly all the kinds of light and all sorts of things were coming into the lens but we don't really need to bring highlights up because it was already bright enough. So what we're going to do with both the highlights and the shadows tab is bring them down a little bit. Now, if I go all the way down, you can see it makes the entire image dark. That's not what we're trying to do, but we don't want this water to be like too super bright. So we're going to bring that around 34, 35, and then we're also going to bring the shadows down a little bit. And you can, you can start to tell that it gets a little bit more cinematic. If I bring the shadows up, it starts to get a little bit, you know, faded and carried away, and, and that's not what we want. So we're going to bring the shadows down just a bit to give this, all these little crevices, these cracks, you know, some more depth. I'm all about the multiple rock depth life. You don't want just your, your whatever your landscape photo, I don't know what you're editing, but you don't want it to just blend into one thing. I want to see all these little crevices and cracks and shadow to, to make it more dramatic just like you can see here right underneath him you can see this shadow where if we just bring everything up you're not going to really get that depth now with the whites you're going to have to experiment with these tabs depending on like how you shot and what the main color is in your in your photo um, you might start moving them up and down and no notice that not a lot happens if we move them all the way down you can see that like it, it not a ton changes and if we move it all the up, all the way up you can see that it kind of be, it becomes like it's overexposed now we could just leave this at zero and i think it'd be pretty pretty fine but i'm gonna add just like a just a, just a little bit of of white to make this kind of this water right here make sure that it's reflecting the sun you know you don't have to do that i think five might be a little much three is probably good and you know but you can kind of make your choice i do i do like the style that makes water look a little bit more crunchy a little more crispy because that's how your eye looks at it i'm not really so much into the flowiness where we could have made this look flowy by setting our cameras to do that but i like the more crunchy crispy feeling here so we're just going to bring the whites up a little bit to give it that reflection now with the black section here i use the same logic that i do for highlights and shadows which is to bring it down a little bit. Now, if we bring them up, you know, it doesn't kill the photo, but all of this nice depth that we worked really hard to get kind of goes away. So if we bring them down just a tad, it really embellishes every single part of the photo that is black, which is only a couple parts, which would be his hat, hoodie, um, this crevice, this crevice. Like, it's, it's going to bring out, you know, a couple of those, those areas and just make it a little bit more cinematic. So... Let's, uh, let's look at where we are in the process. We'll go back to the original. And so already with no presets, no crazy you know, money spent, we've, we've taken a photo that's like fine, a little bit hazy, a little bit too white, and we've made it a lot more dramatic. And this is how I remember my eye seeing it with this very detailed water and this crispy, crunchy stuff going on. So that's pretty much it for the light tab. We're going to go down to the color tab and we're not going to do too much, but you know, we will glance over a couple of these. So with the first one, the temp and the tint, I don't really think need to change. Now you could have shot at a part at a time in the day where it's sunset and everything is very purple and orange when the sun is kind of going down, hitting against the sky. We did not have that. It was already kind of cool. So if anything, I would probably go the opposite direction and give it a little bit more, you know, give it a little bit more rock earthy tone, or I could just keep it as, at zero and it's that more dramatic tone. So we're not going to go the opposite way because you can tell everything looks blue. And these rocks were not blue. They were more, you know, concrete, like this color. Now, with Vibrance, I am going to bring it up just a tad to give everything a little bit more pop. If we go the opposite way with Vibrance, we see that we have a very matte, muted 
style that starts happening and if we go too vibrant this just looks totally fake there's no way the rocks look like this and there's no way that this was that green at that time of year so we're just going to bring that back down and just work our way up you know around that or so again if you mess up you go back to zero uh, and then you just kind of work yourself up to give it that extra little pop now with saturation as well we go too far to the right this totally starts looking fake the, his shirt starts looking pink these are way too green and these rocks again are blue so these two sliders do very similar things not not exactly if we go to the very left it sucks the color out of everything to where it's almost black and white but it's more kind of dingy so with the saturation you kind of just have to decide do you need to go up or do you need to go down I don't think that this was all quite that green, at least from what I remember my eye seeing. So I'm going to take this down to probably about four or five. So, And we can always go back and check the other work, the, the one that I've already edited, to see how close we got. So if we're checking back, the original photo, you can see all of this up from this area is pretty light, pretty hazy. And now we're getting a lot more cinematic. We've got a lot more texture and clarity coming out of the, the highlights and of all these rocks and things. Which, speaking of, that's it for the color tab. And now we're going to go down to effects. Now, what the texture tab does is really cool, uh, as well as the clarity tab. So if we start dragging these up, uh, we're going to see... Uh, texture kind of come to life we go too far this all totally looks too fake if we go left we get too soft we get too weird with it um, and uh, if, if you hover over the the little sliders here they kind of tell you what they do as a little example it's a little bit annoying I should probably turn that off um, but we're gonna go to the right and the reason I want to add a, a pretty nice amount a healthy amount of texture not too much is because I want this water to get just a little bit more crispy now uh let's see i think that might be a little too much so let's go with like you know let's go with like i don't know 18 let's just say that 17 18 somewhere around there is, is pretty good now with clarity same thing we go too far to the right it starts looking like it's cool but it, it's getting way too crunchy here in the background now his shirt looks really good because it's in the foreground here but we don't want to make everything else crunchy as same if we go too far left we get way too soft and that's not the style we're going to go for so we're going to bring this up to probably about 30 or so to get this really nice wet rock texture as well as the lines in the shirt here uh, as well as the lines here in the hat and everything else kind of starts to blend together now i like the crispiness of this water here we check back we go here everything's kind of mute and matte we go here, everything's nice, dark, cinematic. Now, dehaze might have been another area where you had thought, okay, my photo's really hazy and white. I should, you know, just start using the dehaze to, to get everything back to normal. But j just like with anything, it might not have been that your, your photo was like super overexposed or underexposed or whatever. So when you use this, you need to be careful because it can start screwing a lot of things up. So... I will use it, you know, very sparingly um, from time to time, depending on what time of day. So if you're shooting really early and it's super, you know, kind of foggy and light, it, there are times to use the dehaze. So we use it about right there. Now, vignette. I know a lot of people kind of like to hate on the vignette. I really like it. If you go up, it does this white effect, which I don't think I ever use. And if you go left, it gives you that more natural vignette that you're used to. Now, if you go too far with it, it it's just like you're kind of ruining the shot so let's bring it back to zero and then go down a little bit about 10 and it just helps blend the rest of these corners together so let's check our work go back with the um, backslash button S starting to get real different here go back to the edited one and we're a lot more dramatic a lot more cinematic and we are ready to move on uh, you can add grain if you like I, don't, I think this photo is a little too realistic to add grain to, and you're not really going to be able to tell. You can see I'm moving the slider all the way up, and it's not going to apply to much except whatever's here in the foreground, so his shirt. So I don't think it needs it. You can do that if you want, but we're going to move on to detail. And so what sharpening does, uh, you know, is obviously <laughs> it makes the, um, you can see the little slider thing there 
keeps trying to pop up it makes things more sharp or if you move to the bottom it makes things more blurry so um, if we move it up like all the way you can tell things get super crispy and crunchy so we're gonna leave it around I don't know 35 probably somewhere where I had it noise reduction you sometimes you can tell is gonna do stuff sometimes it's not there's not a lot to fix in this photo because it was shot pretty fine so we're going to leave noise reduction at, at zero. Uh, with clear noise re reduction, it really just helps to uh, make sure that there's no like dingy, weird, like rainbow type stuff going on. Uh, like depending on like how light this is coming in, like, you know, you just reduce the color noise. You can see in that little slider, if you go left, it kind of gets all pixelated and rainbowy, kind of like oils on the ground or something. So I always apply a little bit just because your eye is not going to be able to see everything. So I'm sure there might be something to fix. I have no idea. <laughs> That's it for those tabs. We're going to move the menu out of the way. Click that panel. And then uh, another tip, you can hit F and go into full view, which is pretty cool. Um, and while you're in full view, you can go back and forth between the original, which looks pretty hazy. Uh, it's kind of blurry in a lot of these spots. And then we go to the edited photo and it's just a lot more clear and uh, yeah, it's just a lot more to the point. So and let's say you took a bunch of photos in the same time, you can open up the rest of your photos again with the forward slash uh, and you can see kind of all the photos from the trip here um, and you can copy the copy edit style. So command C um, on a Mac or whatever you're using um, should be the same. And then we can easily apply them to other photos here. So for example, um, I can paste the same style and I've already actually used the same settings on this. So if I go to the original photo, look how hazy it is. It's super hazy in the bottom left and right and the top right is overexposed. And we do this, you can actually see the sky coming through here. The road actually looks like road. Same thing here. I can paste those settings onto here. Go back to the original one. It's all hazy and white around here. And then I can apply the the those. Uh, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Those settings. I can apply those settings by just copy and pasting them to the photo, and you know you're ready to go. Same thing here. Original and pasted settings. And then if you like it well enough, you can go to presets go up here and create a preset with the settings that you like so and then those will always be there and everything will be categorized to your liking uh, you can hit that slash to get out of there f for full preview and then f to go back to your day all right well that's it that's how i'm currently taking hundreds of photos from the trip and i'm just kind of finding the right settings for each each day was different but once you kind of get that general effect that you want from editing one you can just quickly copy and paste and make sure all of them are to your liking so i hope this tutorial was helpful let me know down in the comments if you're going to try it if there's easier ways to do what i did again by no means a photography master i'm just starting to pick it up myself but it's pretty easy to take a garbage photo and make it look pretty good in, in Lightroom or Photoshop. I was actually using Photoshop for a lot of this stuff but uh, when some of my friends were like you just got to do this in Lightroom I was like okay and then you can see adjust some sliders and you can get stuff way better than you know your camera phone or whatever. So let me know what you think down in the comments and let me know your tips tricks shortcuts there's some things with this Lightroom that I don't like because it's not like the classic one. So the shortcuts are different. Why would you do that? I don't bring the bring the side by side back, please. I need it. I would like it. Somebody tell me how to do it. It's, it's not Y, it's not Command Y, and it's not Y. If you want to see some more of just my personal photography, I'm not posting as much of it on our Swag Talks Design handle, but you can go follow me at, at the Drew Wilson on Instagram. You can see just some stuff that I put up there because you know I like posting photos. So you can check it out. Hit me up. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.